Hey guys, so today I am rounding up all of the bronzers that I have purchased over the past several months. I have nine new bronzers, uh, and actually more than nine because I have multiple shades in, in a couple of them. Anyway, nine new bronzers to talk about. Uh, I just wanted to kind of discuss like the differences of them, why I like ones more than the other. I couldn't really rank all of them, but I have two bronzers, which I will leave to the end, that are definitely my favorites. I like all of these bronzers for like their own reasons, but I have been reaching for these two particular bronzers the most. And anyway, we'll get to that towards the end. So I swatched all of these uh, bronzers next to one another uh, on my arm. I kind of ran out of space so they do kind of uh, lead up onto my palm. I hope that's okay. I know the swatches look very different on my palm versus my arm. But anyway, I'm gonna talk you through them and these are also in no particular order. I just kind of grabbed them out of my drawer and just kind of started swatching them. So I'm gonna start with the one that's all the way on the left and that is this Chanel Le Beige bronzer. So this was part of their uh, Le Beige collection for this year and this is the Healthy Glow Illuminating Powder in Sunset. So this bronzer is kind of like mid-toned compared to all the bronzers I'm gonna be talking about. Um, it has a very soft, creamy kind of texture. I believe this is just a like pressed powder kind of formula. And it has, and this is what makes this bronzer very different from the others, it has a very, very like prominent golden sheen to it. You can see it in the pan here, and I think you can probably see it in the swatch as well, but you can definitely see it when you apply it to your face. So it almost looks like you put down a regular bronzer and then put like a little bit of a gold highlight on top. It is very, very pretty. It's slightly dramatic, I think, for the everyday, but that definitely hasn't stopped me. I've used this bronzer quite a bit. This is probably one of the older ones. I think I purchased this months ago because I feel like I've been talking about this bronzer for a long time and it's appeared not in like last month's favorite, but maybe the month before, maybe even the month before that. Uh, but anyway, I really enjoy this. Very easy to blend, very, very soft kind of powder. So it's definitely one that you want to be careful <laughs> when applying, uh, but it does blend out really, really beautifully. And if you really kind of spend the time to buff it, that gold will really kind of like shine through and it'll look just Oh, really, really stunning on the skin. And again, out of all the bronzers I'm gonna be talking about, I wanna say this is fairly mid-tone and it is definitely a little bit on the warmer side. So that is the Chanel Le Beige Bronzer in Sunset. The next bronzer I wanna talk about and the one that is swatched right next to the Chanel Sunset one is the one that I just uh, showed you in my Guerlain uh, video, the Brazilian Summer Collection. So this is the one that comes in the wooden packaging. It's part of the Terracotta line and it is their bronzer and blush powders. So it is a duo. It has like the blush kind of in that uh, diamond shape in the center there. And so when I just want the bronzer, I just kind of like focus either my brush or my finger right in the center there. So in my mind, I've kind of written this bronzer off as a blush because for me personally, I'm just gonna wanna go in with a brush and kind of swirl it all around. And I pick up a lot more of the blush than I do the bronzer. And it ends up being a very kind of like warm, pinky toned kind of blush. And it's really beautiful. And in fact, it can work as both a blush and a bronzer to kind of just warm up your entire cheek. So that's how I've been using it. That's how I think of it in my mind. It's definitely more of a blush than a bronzer for me. But if you did want to spend the time to just kind of focus your brush right in the center there, you're going to get a shade that's uh, very similar to the swatch that you see. It is a little bit lighter than the Chanel Sunset bronzer, but it is not really, really pale. It is actually a fairly effective bronzer. Um, the tone is very nice. It has like more of a pinky, peachy kind of tone versus a warm like orange yellow kind of tone. So I do think if you want to spend the time just to use this as a bronzer, it really makes a very lovely bronzer. This bronzer, I believe from what I can tell, it looks like just a regular pressed powder, but when you kind of like finger swatch this, it feels really, really smooth. It almost feels like a baked powder. So there is like this creaminess to it, which is really, really quite lovely. So while this bronzer doesn't have like metallic bits like the Chanel one does, I think because of the formula, it definitely has like a little bit of a satin sheen there. It's very subtle, but it's very lovely and keeps it from looking too dry. So that is the Guerlain Bronzer and Blush Duo from the Terracotta line this year. And then next we have the Givenchy um, Healthy Glow Powder in 01. So this is one of the newer bronzers from Givenchy. It is a baked powder and can you see, I don't know if you can still see the emblem in there. It's such a cool design. 
on this pan. Um, but because this is a baked powder, it definitely is a little bit more sheer upon, you know, initial application. You can definitely build it up. But the shade of this one is a little bit light and it has a tinge of that like oranginess to it. So you can see it next to the Guerlain there. It has like a little bit of like a yellow kind of base to it. So I'm happy that I got like the lightest shade. I was debating between this one and the shade up, but if it's the same tone, and deeper, I think that would end up looking just way too orange on my skin tone. But because this is fairly light, that orange kind of like yellow undertone doesn't look too bad because I can just kind of like lightly dust this all over my face and it being a baked powder, it really prevents me from picking up way too much product. It's really kind of mistake proof because this is a baked product. You get like a really nice kind of like subtle satin sheen to it. It's not like a flat matte, even though there are no kind of like metallic frosty shimmery particles or anything in the actual powder. It's just something in the formula. It just ends up looking very, very creamy um, on the skin. The next bronzer is the Ilia um, Night Light Bronzing Powder, and this is in the shade Drawn In. This is just a straight up pressed powder, nothing baked or fancy about it or anything like that. It has actually a very, very nice tone. Um, in the swatch, you can see that it is definitely a little bit deeper than the Givenchy, but you can also see that its tone is a lot more neutral. So this is just a wonderful, like very universal kind of bronzer. It's a pressed powder, so it's easy to pick up. It's a matte bronzer, so there's no shimmers to it. It has a very neutral tone. So I feel like this is just gonna appeal to a lot of people because it is very, very, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but it's very, very, basic, you know, in the best way possible. And when I want to do like a very quick, simple, kind of like no makeup makeup look, I definitely think of this bronzer. I just think it's just easy to use. I can just kind of like lightly dust it all over and I'm good to go. But I really enjoy the kind of like neutral tone to this particular bronzer. Next up, I have the new um, Guerlain Terracotta Matte Sculpting Powder in Claire Light. And this is a matte powder. There's no shimmer to it or anything. And Guerlain uh, bronzers, at least for me, always kind of look a little too orangey for my taste. So I was really surprised at how neutral this particular powder was for Guerlain. But you can see I swatched it next to the Ilia, which I find to be um, just like a really nice neutral. This has a just like the teensiest bit more warmth than the Ilia. And it's lighter in shade, it's also a pressed powder, it's a matte finish, and because it's a little bit lighter than the Ilia, if my self tan has faded, this is a really good one for me to go in with. So I've really been enjoying this one and the Ilia too, despite the fact that they both have matte finishes. I'm not the biggest fan of matte bronzers or matte anything. I really like a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of something to, especially my um, face products. So as long as the matte product doesn't look too dry or powdery on my skin, I'm okay with it. And these two products don't do that. They basically just aren't shiny, but they're not dry and they're not flat and they're not powdery looking. So as far as matte bronzers go, I actually really enjoy these. And then next up, I have two shades in a matte bronzer and that's the Charlotte Tilbury um, airbrush bronzer. I have um, medium and then I have fair swatched. Out of all of the matte bronzers I've talked about, I think I do like the medium Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer the most. And the reason why I like the Charlotte Tilbury the most out of at least these three matte bronzers is the formula. So when you look at this bronzer, right, it's totally matte. I don't see any reflective particles, nothing. But whenever I swatch it or put it on my face, it just has like a little bit of like a natural glow to it. It's just, it's very, very pretty. I also do really like the tone of this. I find it to be uh, definitely more on the neutral side in terms of bronzers, but it definitely warms up my face. It doesn't look so neutral that it looks like a little bit muddy or it looks like a contour on my face. It just has a really nice tone to it. So I really love this uh, airbrush bronzer. What I will mention though, I mean, this pan is gigantic, right? Everyone's talked about it. This is a really, really big compact. It's so impressive. You have like this giant bit of bronzer. It is out of all of the bronzers that I'm talking about, it is the least pigmented. To get the swatches that you see on my arm, I had to go in over and over and over again. And I think if you're someone that maybe is a little bit shy about their bronzer or you know just doesn't really like a heavy bronzer look, then you definitely wanna go with the Charlotte Tilbury because you can go in with your brush, pick up a lot of product, but when you brush it on your face, it's just a very, very faint appearance, which, you know, for cheap products generally, I think that's a good thing. You really don't want like too overly pigmented 
of a product, um, especially like bronzer or blush, because it just, it gets out of hand very, very quickly. But this is really faint and it just builds. It builds beautifully. So I really like the fact that this bronzer is really on like the less pigmented side of things because I think it just allows you to build the depth that you want without having to like blend out too much product. So that's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer and out of all the matte bronzers, this one is my favorite. And then next up we have the Dior Bronzer, the one that came out with their Color Games collection, their Summer 2020 collection. This is called the Dior Skin Mineral Nude Bronze Color Games and I got it in the shade two. The shade one looked a little bit too fair. And I actually didn't even address that with the Charlotte Tilbury one uh, because the fair is so fair. You can kind of see it on my skin. It shows up a little bit, you know, when I use it to like brontour, but it is really so fair. I don't even reach for it. I don't even think about it. Maybe this is something I'll use like in the winter time or something like that. But anyway, the Dior 01 shade looked kind of fair, like the Charlotte Tilbury fair one. So I decided to go for 02. And I do think this one, when I mix the two together, the outer ring and this center deeper shade, I do think it's a little bit too deep for me. And you can probably see that in the swatch. So I do have to be a little bit careful with this one. I do kind of focus my brush around the um, outer ring here and maybe kind of dip into the center one a little bit because I do like the tone of the center shade. It's a little bit more neutral than the outer ring. The outer ring is a little bit more warm, but that's what I have on my face today. And it does blend really, really beautifully. And again, if I'm careful in how I use this, it's really lovely. It is a pressed powder formula, but it has that really kind of subtle, creamy satin sheen to it. Almost like as if this was a baked product. It has like a similar sheen to like the Givenchy one um, that, that's a baked kind of gel -A product. This has a similar kind of finish to that. So it is quite lovely. It is very, very smooth. It's very soft. It blends really beautifully. But my only hesitation in using this one is that it can be just a little bit too deep for my skin tone. That's the Dior Color Games number two bronzer. All right, we're down to the last two bronzers and these two are my favorite <laughs> out of all of the bronzers that I've picked up, that I've played with. And I don't think this is gonna come as any surprise because both of these have appeared in my favorites. And the first one I'll talk about is this Clinique one. This is the Powder Pop Flower Bronzer in Solar Pop. This is like a baked gel -A product. And when you look at the swatches on, <laughs> on my arm here, this swatch is like right on my wrist. So I remember picking this up and thinking, oh, maybe it's gonna be just like a little bit too warm. Uh, when I swatched it, I thought, oh, it looks kind of orangey. But when I put it on my cheeks, it actually turns out to be a very peachy kind of brown tone. And it's so, so lovely. It's definitely a product I can use as both blush and bronzer. And sometimes I have taken this out just to use as a little bit of a blush uh, versus, you know, bronzer, but because it's baked gelée, you don't pick up that much product. You can put down a very beautiful kind of like sheer veil of color all over. You can build it up in the areas you want to like bronzer, you know, under your cheekbones, under your chin. But I just really love the formula of this and the shade of this is so pretty. That peachiness is just really, really pretty on the skin. So I have been absolutely loving this, constantly reaching for it. And the other bronzers that I really just can't stop using are these Kosas, the Sun Show bronzers. This just appeared in my favorites maybe two months in a row. I have shades light and medium. I also have dark, Kosas sent these to me. And I use light and medium. So I basically use light all over. Sometimes if I'm feeling really self-tanned, I'll use this kind of like as a setting powder. Um, but you'll see these swatches are like on the palm of my hand. They have the most beautiful sheen. It's just so, so gorgeous. And I know a lot of people don't like uh, bronzers with any sheen to them. They really prefer matte. I just really like a sheeny bronzer. I just think it adds to like the glow and like the healthfulness of my complexion. I just really love it. Here's the medium. So I'll brush the light all over and then I'll go in and kind of like sculpt a little bit with the medium, you know, do the bronzing action. But it really is like the sheen and the tone of these bronzers that I absolutely love. And these are baked products, but these are just like a baked powder product. And usually, at least my experience with like baked powder products is that they're very, very powdery. And these are not very, very powdery. You can see how clean like the compact is. There's a little bit of, you know, kick up, but not a lot. And I think it's because there's a lot of, I believe, shea butter 
in the formula of this bronzer and that's what I think keeps it really creamy. It's not just like metallic particles in here that make it so glowy. I think it's the actual formula, the creamy, creamy formula of it that gives it this beautiful, beautiful glow. And I cannot, I can't stop using these Kosas bronzers. They are out of all of these bronzers that I've been playing with. These are my absolute favorite. The Clinique is definitely a close second. And then all the others I'll like throw into the mix. I really do like changing up my makeup. I'll throw into the mix and I really do like them all. But the matte ones, I just don't use as often as like the more glowier, sheeny ones just because of my personal taste. So that is it. Those are um, all of the bronzers that I've acquired over the past uh, several months. I think probably starting towards the beginning of this year. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video.